Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, the pitch started to um, spin pretty much from ball one, but we saw in that last session on, on day one that it just started to take a chunk out of the surface. And Rohit Sharma played uh, a, a gem of an innings. I think England will look back on that first day um, and, and realise they didn't quite get it right. They didn't bowl well enough. Um, but you can sometimes get intimidated by a great player. Uh, and Rohit Sharma, I think, was that, that, that player on, on that first day. Jinka Rihanna played nicely. Um as soon as England got the bat in hand and we saw the ball fizzing past the outside edge and then the odd ball just kind of skidding on, particularly from uh, Axa Patel, um, you know, it's never and ever easy as, as a batting unit. Um, but, but England have got to be honest. I mean, to have just one partnership and the highest one being 38, yeah. if that is a partnership, that, you know, you, you're kidding yourself. There, there should have been more partnerships, even though the pitch was doing, uh, you know, plenty. They've got enough skill in that dressing room to have played better. And, and that's where they've got to be honest with each other. It's easy just to say, oh, the pitch was against us, everything was against us, the umpires, the third umpires. Uh, you know, Ravi Ashwin's pact was delivered for him. That That is test match cricket. The, the home t- team have it in their right to produce whatever they wish. Uh, you've then got to be honest with yourself and go, right, did, did we play to our maximum this week? England didn't. You yeah. know, they weren't as, you know, nowhere near what they were in the first week. Conditions were different and it was a lot easier the first week. Um, uh, than the second but you know they've got to be honest with themselves they can't just say oh, oh, oh these things happen on these kind of wickets you know because they'll come up against India again in the next two tests I'm sure on a similar kind of wicket so it's how you improve and, and learn from from what you've found yourself playing on um, India are, are just more skilled daggers in these conditions when, when the pitch spins from pretty much ball one they have more skilled batters at playing the spinning ball and they have better spinners to produce the spinning ball so it's not going to be easy uh, in in the last two games we know from being on tour in India before what where England have got to be careful is that you know it's like this juggernaut suddenly arise from India you know it's a big big juggernaut that starts to really kind of mow you down and, and you've just got to take stock and it, it is possible to come back it is possible for England to bounce back and win this series by you know being honest with themselves and get into a medibad and maybe the fresh start a new hotel new ground will help them uh, the pink ball certainly will give them a little bit of a boost you would feel um, but I, if I was England, I would be preparing to play on a similar kind of wicket. Yes, you you know, think- I, I, yeah, I, mean, I don't think it'd be as bad as this one in terms of spinning as much on day one. But, you know, surely if you're Ravi Shastri and Virat Kohli, you've seen the way England play the spinning ball. Not the, not the, not the ball that's just spinning on day one, like in the first test and day two, where it was just doing a little bit. This was spin, real spin and spit. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they've just beaten England by 317. So why, if you're the home team, you, you wouldn't want to play England again on a similar kind of surface? Yeah. Well, I, I've got to be honest, they're not as good. No. <laughs> That's the honest answer there. The, the, the Indian spinners, you know, and, and Ravi Ashwin, he, he, he's a great at the game and, and, and he's going to end up with 500 plus test match wickets, if not more. Um, you know, he, he's that good a bowler. Uh, Axel Patel on, on debut, he's the one that I look at actually, he's a, a debutant. And it was his pace that was better than the England um, spinner's pace. He kind of fired it in. And those balls back to the right-handers that aren't spinning and it's just kind of skidding on. They're a nightmare to face. And then you see the next ball, it spits past the outside edge. Almost impossible to play that kind of left-arm spinner. So, you know, it's Axel Patel that I would be looking at if I'm a Jack Leach. And going, what, what, what did he do differently on this pitch? Jack was kind of nice. He was kind of rolling it out. It was lovely, mm. a bit of flight. Whereas Axel Patel was like, boom, firing it in like Jadeja does on these kind of wickets. So again, yes. that's, I, I mean, I'm tough as is probably the, the man to ask about that. Can you change the way that you bowl for a given service? Can Jack Leach all of a sudden in a week's time in a medibat if the pitch is doing thing, can he come a bit more round arm and fire it in with a bit more side spin because then the ball might just skid on to the right-handers every now and again and also spit past the the outside edge when you get it right. Um, because Axel would tell, as the left-arm spinners go, um, I, I was watching Jack Leach and think, oh, he's nice, he, he, he's bowling nicely but you know you, you wouldn't be fearful of facing him you know you might have the odd ball that uh, goes past the outside edge but you know I think the real great spinners in, in these conditions trouble both sides of the bat you know they, they trouble the inside edge because they do get that ball to go straight and then they obviously trouble the outside edge and that's what Axel Patel did in this test match yeah and that's why I say they've got to be honest that um you know, the, you can say, oh, the, the pitch was uh, a poor one for Test match cricket, and and, and you know, there's, there's many arguments that should suggest that it is, but it, it's still a pitch that you know the Indians got runs on. Yeah. You know, and Ashwin got a hundred on it, so clearly you can get runs on this kind of surface. It's not easy. It's, it takes a huge amount of skill, um, a huge amount of planning, and the way that you're going to play, and playing across the spin 
when it's spitting like it was is, is a high, high risk shot. And that's uh, what Rory Burns plays under pressure, I guess. You know, he's, he's had a, a real poor run of form over the last uh, few test matches that he's played. He missed the two in Sri Lanka. Um, started okay in the first test uh, here with that 33 and then played a poor shot and then he's gone naught, naught and 20 odds. So as an opening batsman, you know that you're under a bit of pressure. You've got Zach Crawley coming back, Johnny Bairstow's arriving. Uh, do we know if Moen Ali's now going home? That was the, the plan, that Moen Ali was going to go home after this test match, uh, which I find absolutely staggering. Yes. When you're just back into the test team, you get all these wickets, just smashed a few into the stands and England potentially would be sending him home. I just don't understand this scientific approach to selection. Are they not being flexible to, to keep players there that have suddenly done something? I just don't quite understand why a series like India away, which is such a huge, huge series in the test calendar, you would be swapping and changing your side so much. I, this, this, this year for me is about winning the Ashes. I know there's a T20 World Cup, but for English cricket, they need to get those Ashes back. And surely the Test team takes preference over the T20 team. And, and if it is that three or four of them miss that T20 five games in India, they'll be playing in the IPL, so they're going to get experience yeah. of playing in this condition. The likes of Butler and Stokes and... Uh, Joffre, that they know how to play T20 cricket. You know, it's it's the test team that really should be getting all their tools. You know, they should be getting all the eggs into the the basket of the test match team to make sure that by the time they get to Australia, they're a, a team that has played a lot of cricket together. You know, up till 2019, all the preference was white ball cricket. It won in the World Cup. I honestly think that this year it's about test match cricket, and I just don't understand all this swapping and changing in a, a huge series like we're seeing. Yeah, you think so? I mean. Uh, Johnny Bairstow is back, having played well in Sri Lanka. He's, uh, he now arrives and is available for the third test. Um, so you'd think that Johnny Bairstow would would get a, a run at number three. Um, Zach Crawley is also going to be available, I believe. So they may look at Zach Crawley. They may look at Zach Crawley for Rory Burns at the top of the order. Yeah. Um, we'll have to wait and see. There's options. I mean, Ollie Pope, he, he's at number six. No one, you know, he needs some some runs. Yeah. You know, he, he keeps playing nicely. He's busy, but. Um, I was surprised that Oli Pope didn't get moved to number three. You know, he's, he's talked about as being this, you know, this this next best, if you like. The, 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 the word on the, the England street is that he could be the next Joe Root. You know, if he's that good, and, and that's the message from inside the England camp, if he's that good, why is he always hidden at number six? Mm. You know, why can't he, in these conditions in particular... Um, where you know you want to get in as soon as you can. You know it's the best time to bat. In, is in that top three or four. You know why wouldn't they have seen him as a number three in this series and, and, and leave Dan Lawrence down at number six? Um, you know the, the, the problem that England have, and, and, and when you play so many players and you swap and change so much, you almost get more headaches because you get more players to discuss. And it's you get a bit confused about who, or who should be playing and who shouldn't. You end up swapping and changing so much that it's, it gets a bit like the 90s. You remember the 90s when they used to swap and change the team all the time? Different circumstances, but I believe the best test teams in the world are a team that you basically arrive, Aggers, and you go, you, you know pretty much nine or ten players every week. You just know that they're going to be there. And there might be one change because it might be a tactical manoeuvre or obviously an injury. Um you know, I think if you look at the swapping and changing of, of, of places in this England side, it's just it's just going a little bit too frantic, it's a bit too scientific for me. Pick on, pick your best players for the best series and just stick with them. Yeah. Don't go one nil up and then change everything. I'd be amazed if it doesn't spin, yeah. um, and it'll probably do a little bit more than we've seen in, in the first two Test matches for the for the seamers. Um, you know, Ollie Stone was was, was the, the standout seamer for England this week, so. Does he play next week? I mean, do you play Broad and Anderson? Joffre Archer obviously will be fit. You'd want a bit of Joffre Archer. Uh, Mark Woods back into the camp as well. Mm. Uh, so they've got lots of... Uh, to see. I think, you know, 20 wickets is going to be difficult. Um, uh, as we've always said overseas, England have got to find a way of getting the best attack for those conditions n next week. They've got to assess them and read them and, and pick the best team for that, that kind of pitch. But it will come down to runs, you know. Can this batting unit pick themselves up to 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 get themselves in, in into the state of mind and the confidence to to face the spinning ball to get 300, 350 in, in the first innings, 400? Because uh, this week they've been a, a a long way short of, of of you know. I don't think Par was you know 350 on this kind of wicket, but it certainly wasn't the 130 in the first innings. Um, the second innings. That's the kind of score I expected England to get. I didn't think they would get many more in the second innings, but in the first innings, they should really have got 250. Um, they didn't. They didn't bat well enough. Um, 
they've just been outskilled, and that's the the w- real worry for the last two games. That it, the pitches are similar. This Indian side have just got more skill for these conditions. Uh, so England will have to play out of their skins to get something out of this Test series.